the suspension of this treaty does give both sides the ability to build up new arms and new rhetoric. This treaty was more than 30 years old. It was signed back in 1987 by the Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and the US President Ronald Reagan. And it required them both to destroy and, and ban uh, ballistic and cruise missiles, ground-based, with a range of 500 to 5,500 kilometers. And it led to the destruction of thousands of warheads, particularly based in Europe. Now, though, both sides accuse each other of violating that treaty. Russia says it doesn't want to be the first to deploy new missiles in Europe, but that if the U.S. were to do so, it would see that as a serious threat and may be forced to develop new missile systems. It is already developing and testing missile systems, including the first hypersonic missile. And we've also heard in the last few days from the NATO Secretary General, who said NATO also needs to be prepared. NATO does not want a new Cold War. We don't want a new arms race. And therefore, we call on Russia to come back into compliance with the INF Treaty. Uh, these new Russian missiles are nuclear capable. Uh, they can reach European cities. They uh, are hard to detect and they have little warning time. So they reduce, they reduce the threshold for any potential use of nuclear weapons in an armed conflict. Now, the suspension of this treaty is just that, a suspension. It doesn't mean this treaty has yet been abandoned altogether. Both sides say they would be willing to revive it, but they would see, need to see concrete action from the other side. Donald Trump has said he would like to see a new treaty involving not just Russia, but perhaps other nuclear powers as well, China, perhaps India and Pakistan at the same time. Um, diplomacy continues on both reviving the existing treaty and perhaps starting a new one. But to start a new one uh, may take a number of years. It may yet be a long way off. Lucy Taylor, CGTN in Moscow.